All right, take number uh, 25. This is the John Deere uh, D125 cowling that we're, uh, or the lawn tractor that we're working on. We just removed the cowling. And that should be easy enough to do. There's four bolts holding it on. You can take the fuel pump off if you want, but you can remove it. It's a good idea to check the fuel pump uh, tube that goes down to the valve cover. But anyway, so we're gonna remove this carburetor. It's pretty dirty. Uh, I think something's leaking. You can see how dirty this is here. Um, it shouldn't get like that. It's all crusty. It looks like fuel has been leaking there. The customer said it hasn't been running well, so get this set up. So you can see here. And we will go ahead and remove this thing. It's going to be these four bolts. There's two here, two here on this side. I've already taken some out before I decided to film this, but pretty sure you all can handle that. So these also have Loctite on them, so they're going to be hard to take out. They're kind of hard to get to also. But go ahead and pull those off. Oh, uh, you can disconnect the fuel line also. And if it's leaking out, you can use a pair of vice grips to pinch it off. They sell special fuel line clamps. But vice grips will do just fine. It's not a bad idea to take a picture of where all these linkages go uh, when they go up to the carburetor, but I've done this a bunch of times, so pretty confident that I'll get them back or that I know where they go. And they also put a T, I think it's a T25 Torx on these. Might make it easier to get to. I'm just using a 3 8 wrench here. Some of them I may be able to get to with the impact and extension. I also unplugged the anti-backfire solenoid that goes here. That have to be unplugged. That's the only wire that you'll have to unplug on this. Let's see if I can get this impact inside here. That'll make it go a lot faster. All right. So I probably could have got that off faster, but I'm having a beer and listening to music, so it's not too bad. So once you get all four of those bolts off for this plastic intake here, you're gonna feel some resistance. There's a hose in the back here um, that you can just kind of pop out of the plastic. It's got a little flange type thing on it. And there's another emissions hose there. This little small one. And that goes into the back of this. And then you have the linkages. So you're going to want to note that this linkage comes from this side of the motor and goes in that way. So you'll just have to kind of work that out of there. And then this bottom linkage, this has a little clip there. So all you really need to do is you can just pull this, let's see if I remember how this one goes. I think you can just pull this linkage straight out. I'll have to do that with two hands, but it's no big deal. Yeah, that just pops out of there. There's a little plastic clip. And then this one, you're going to just take the spring off. Sometimes a pair of pliers helps with that. A pair of needle nose. Take the spring off. And then you can work the whole thing to the right off of the governor control arm. And then all, all you've got is the fuel line here, which we will disconnect if we can get to it. John Deere doesn't like to make their stuff easy to get to. Let me get this fuel line out of the way. Or this fuel um, throttle, throttle control rod would be the proper term. So you want to note the or orientation of those so you can put them back in. And we'll pull this fuel line off, which those are always fun. Let's push it off with these pliers. There she goes. Okay, now you've got this. 
and this thing is a mess. So we're going to go ahead and pull these bolts off. They look like 13s or half inch. Pull those off. This plastic will come off. They'll unthread from here. This plastic will come off and then we'll be left with the carburetor. So I'm going to pull off this uh, choke control rod and note which way that goes. Okay, so now we've got this whole unit here. It's a mess, as you can see. I'm not sure why there's a ton of oil here. But that could be an issue. And they're usually not this messy, so that indicates a problem. But we'll uh, take this to the bench. All right. <clears throat> now we've got that off of the lawnmower. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'm also going to go put some gloves on because it's pretty cold today. Washing your hands in the shop sink with no heated water is a little bit uncomfortable. But we've got this here on the desk. So we grab some gloves and we will get that going. All right, got gloves now. It's a rainy day. Figured I'd have a beer and make some money today. So I think these are going to be a 13. The first thing we're going to do is take these two bolts off and get rid of some of this plastic here because that's in our way. It's a 13. I'm going to get this ultrasonic cleaner heated up. Okay. If you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, you can do this all by hand. Not a big deal. Get some card cleaner. And that is not a 13. Let's see what a 12 does. Might be a 10. 7 sixteenths. Yeah, this thing is messy. I'm going to clean all these parts up, scrub them in the sink, find out where there's oil leaking because that's annoying and it makes a mess. So the only place oil, I did a uh, leak down test. I'm leaking gas everywhere too. I did a leak down test on this motor and everything shows good. So I don't think it's the head gasket. But, so the only other thing up there that is the uh, crankcase breather, and if somebody overfilled it, that could be where all this oil came from through here. There's a gasket on the carb there. We'll set that aside to clean it later. Okay, now these, these are where the layman runs into a problem. These are inverted torques and all of these motors have it. You could try to get them off with vice grips but I always recommend having the correct tools for the job. And I have a master torque set here. like a seven inverted torques no let's try a six yeah number six inverted torques actually number five wow okay number five inverted torques to get this stud out of here I know that's pretty annoying you could probably do it with pliers they're not on there super hard Oh, and the gasket holds these in too. So I don't have a new gasket. I'm going to try to clean this carburetor and fix it. So I want to be careful with this gasket here. If I have a little scraper tool, would be nice. There's a razor blade. Go old school. 
See if we can salvage this gasket, otherwise I'll be making one. That came off nicely. We'll clean that up too. Probably use some sealant later when we put it back together. Okay, then those studs can come out. This has a gasket on it also. Got a little bit torn up. Thing's a mess. I'm going to throw a heat gun on it. See if we can coax it to come off of there. We'll definitely be using the gasket sealant on this and we're reassembling because I don't want that to leak and I'm pretty sure I'm tearing this gasket up. So I recommend getting a rebuild kit if you're going to do this or making a new gasket. Clean this surface up a little bit. Okay. Now, get this old gasket material off. When I reassemble this, I use an aviation, a Permanex aviation gasket maker. It's pretty much shellac. I think it's easier to take apart just because airplanes have to be taken apart annually. So they use a good fuel sealant, sealant uh, because it has it can't leak on your airplane but it is also removable for the annual inspections. Let's take this. <clears throat> I'll use a flatbed on that. Flat head on that. Okay. Get a better flathead. A lot of my customers wonder why things take so long or why there's so many hours involved. Uh, normally, normally I'll just say, uh, well, if you don't like it, you can do it yourself. It's not rocket science, but you do have to be careful. Two Phillips or flathead screws to take the bowl out. To knock that loose because they have these little tiny o-rings on this model that whole gasket is just a little thing and if you if you pull that off be super careful also when you pull this off inside there let's see get a little pointer inside this hole right there is a brass piece that you probably can't see on the camera but that'll fall right out of there and then it's really hard to see which way it goes back in. I've had some employees blow air through this and blow that brass piece out in the shop here and uh, not gonna find that if that blows out. So let me grab my pliers. This whole plastic piece will come out. Clean these up a little bit and gently pull that plastic piece out. Now there's your float and everything else. The pickup is in there. There's that little brass piece as a pickup. That looks clear. So I'm going to set this aside. I don't see any, any problems there. 
really don't see any problems with this gasket here. So the whole problem with this lawnmower may have been um, the leak in the intake because I'm pretty sure the intake is leaking. There's a couple O-rings in this. Let's see. We'll pull this little rubber gasket off of here so we can stick it in the cleaner. But be very careful. It's almost, if you don't have a rebuild kit, you should. <laughs> And I've got one coming, but I wanted to see if I could fix it without having to charge parts. So we'll see. I've taken these apart and found this gasket smashed because the homeowner that was working on it didn't know how to put it back on correctly. There's also an O-ring here. Probably going to replace that one. And everything else in here can go in the cleaner. I'm going to go in the sink real quick and wash the majority of this gunk off of here. And then we'll put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm also going to wash these plastics. This I'm going to leave alone. We'll clean that up later. And this, there's an O-ring down there that I'm going to go ahead and pull out. Because it doesn't look too happy. It's all flat. Let's see. Yeah, it'd be hard to see that. It's not an O-ring anymore. So we'll be replacing those. And yeah, I'll take this off. It's usually a 12 millimeter. Let's see if this no nope. oh yeah and there's a 12. it's the anti-backfire solenoid so all of this is going to go in the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, i'm going to clean the, the big chunks off of it right now i cleaned these up i didn't spend a ton of time on them i still need to blow these out make sure there's no water still in there but the important part these carburetor parts are nice and clean and the ultrasonic cleaner is not like some magical thing it's still it took some hand work it's still dirty but um, it kind of breaks things up heats up the grease that's on it and uh, all that so I, I've pulled these out of the vinegar and water mix in the ultrasonic cleaner blow them out Made sure all the ports are clear. So we're gonna reassemble this thing. I have a, an assorted O-ring kit here. I use these smaller ones, which are number five O-ring. They looked pretty close. I put a little oil on them and I already put one down in there. And the other one goes right there. So I already, Put a little bit of just regular motor oil on it, just keep it lubed up. Hopefully fits right in there. We've got this gasket set correctly on this plastic piece. Only goes one way. Make sure the brass piece is down in there and the pickup tube inside there, which is maybe hard to see, but inside here, so that gasket popped off. You have to be really careful with these gaskets. We'll see if this works. Ideally you would just replace the carburetor. They're cheap enough nowadays. But for us poor folks, trying to show a good way to do it. And this goes a certain way. So we're going to have to put it on the carburetor body itself. little gasket thing has little grooves that it goes into specific places this piece right see the piece sticking up there that goes into where we put this o-ring in this hole here so 
That'll help you align everything. Of course, looks like they probably used a special O-ring, so my little O-ring kit from the local hardware store is not fitting in there. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of oil See if we can't slide it on that o-ring just the smallest amount spread it around there we'll see if we can make this work it's kind of a they've made it difficult to rebuild carburetors now but the proper rebuild kit would take care of this problem back together. Okay, so this carburetor is cleaned out. I'm going to blow these plastic pieces out, make sure there's no water in them. And then we're going to reassemble this whole mess here. Just gonna put a light. This is a. Well, you won't be able to read that. Permatex Aviation Forma Gasket. I'm just gonna put a really light coating on it. That's all it takes. Put that there. This is the throttle side. You don't want to plug up any holes or anything with this. Just get a little, little stick them on there. It'll help it out. I'll do this on the intake also when I install it on the engine. Kind of a firm believer. If you're not, if you don't have new gaskets, this is a good way to go. Get our studs ready here. That makes it easier. So these go in first before the gasket and bolt to this. Ah, studs go first. Okay, let me get my stuff together here. Studs go first, gasket goes on top of that with the little hole that lines up like that. Then this gasket goes on making sure it lines up. that. Then you can install this with your special torque screw or vice grips. that good and snug see a little gasket material squeezing out that's good now this with the gasket on there bolts on here with the nuts 7 16 nuts we can install this this has an aluminum crush washer on it. For a while they were making these, they're 12 millimeter, but they were making them too thin to fit a regular Craftsman wrench into. And you had to customize a wrench, you had to sacrifice a wrench and grind it down thin enough to fit in here. But this one doesn't have that, so. We are good to go. We can install this back on the lawnmower. All right, <clears throat> now we're back with the carburetor assembly here with all its plastic and other junk on it. So this is gonna get assembled there. 
I've got to get my gasket sealant. And I'm going to clean these up a little bit. We're back with our assembled carburetor components here. We're going to clean up these surfaces. These do have little gaskets here. I think they always leak after a while, after a mower gets to be a certain age. So what I usually do is <clears throat> use this aircraft sealant on them. But we've got to hook up all these linkages. So this choke, when you choke it, it pushes it up. So we want to make sure this is on the right side to where it's choking it up. So that would put it up on this side. So we'll go ahead and hook this up. Like that. Yep. So that's correct. Let's get this throttle linkage hooked up. Remember I said it goes from the outside towards the center line of the engine. So we will connect that up with its return spring. Okay, so that's hooked up on this carburetor side. We have both of the linkages hooked up. It's easiest to do this throttle linkage first, just the way you have to work it in there. And you have to get the spring in this little hole down there. The spring's on. <clears throat> now we'll hook up this choke linkage. And that's the nice one with the little plastic clip that you just line up, push it in, and it holds it all together. It goes, and then push it until you hear it click. There you go. So that stuff's all hooked up. I am going to put this aviation gasket sealant on it. You don't want to lay this down because it's going to bend the, uh, all your control rods. So I'm going to put gasket sealant on these intake surfaces. Okay, so right now all the control rods are hooked up. I've got the original gaskets in there, but I put sealant on those surfaces. Give it a helping hand. At this point, we can bolt those up as long as everything is clear and working correctly. Uh, we can put all of our bolts back on for the plastic intake. So, once those are all tightened down, then you're ready to start putting the cowling back on. Make sure your fuel line's hooked up. There's two lines back here. One of them's an air breather that you just shove in the back of this plastic deal. And then the other one is another kind of vacuum hose for the emissions. That's that smaller hose that we pulled off earlier. There's a nipple for it. And that just plugs right in. So that's all installed. Uh, your linkages are installed, your anti-backfire solenoid, and everything's tight, sealed up. Linkages are working cleanly, nothing's hanging up. Throttle's clear. Yep, okay. Now the cowling can go back on. One thing I need to mention about the cowling the bolts that go on there. Most of the time, especially on John Deere's, there are some that are smaller. You see the difference there? They're slightly smaller. And that's really annoying because if you, these, the smaller ones go in the back two holes. If you put these big ones back there, it hits the flywheel and pretty much ruins the magnet for the uh, ignition system. So. That's a booby trap, I think, that John Deere put on so they, people don't work on them themselves. So that's a, a, there's, let's see, three bolts 
that are larger and two that are slightly smaller. So the slightly smaller ones go in the back of the engine on the back of the cowling back there. Make sure everything is going on easily. You shouldn't have to force this on. It should kind of lay naturally. And the bolts line up. You may have to push some of these metal uh, fairings. They really work as air ducts. Okay, at this point, it's a good idea to make sure this turns freely. You don't hear any grinding or anything like that. That'll make sure you got all the bolts in the right place. And then from here, you just put the air filter on. Air filter cover. And then I have the, uh, the fan shroud cover here removed because I did a leak down test on it, but uh, you didn't, oh, I guess you do, you have to remove that to get this cowling off. So you'll, you guys will have to put that back on also. It's just four or five sixteenths screws. And it just sits up there and the holes are lined up. Helps to put two screws in and the other two will be lined up. I'll have to get my 516 nut driver. Just zip those down real quick. And this motor is done as far as the carb cleaning. And we'll see if it runs with what we did there. If it doesn't, then there's likely a different issue. Like I said, I did a leak down test and that was good. The compression was 160 on this side, 155 on this side, which is pretty excellent. And then I've done a leak down on them, so I don't suspect any problems with the valves. I think it was a fuel delivery issue, which hopefully we just addressed. So, got spark plugs in. This fuel line is pretty poor. That could be an issue too, but I did test the fuel flow. This needs to be plugged back in. And I probably could have cleaned that up a little better. This has obviously been a problem in the past because it has electrical tape on it. It's like somebody was trying to seal up a crack in it. So pretty suspicious of that. sure that's in there. There she goes. Okay. I don't know if this is run, gonna run good, but let's give it a shot here. Parking brakes on.